Moikai, do it again. So if, if, if you need to swap, swap. Yep. Yep. So, Tachi Toshi. Scoot this way. Scoot that way. Tachi Toshi. Yoi. Swordsmen take their command. You don't need to do that. Dale, you didn't have to do that. Don't worry about it. Hajime. The swordsman's going to come in. One. Grab the. No, 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 no. Watch. One. All right, now we match. Two. Three. Draw the Joe all the way back and step across center line. And now a big motion. Attack the head. Gyakte. The hand should be reversed, right? Nice, 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 nice. The sword's going to come around to cut you in the neck. As they do, draw the Joe all the way back over your head to protect yourself. And then pop it up under their hands. Nice. Good. Right here. Right here. Now step through and pin the sword. Step through and pin the sword. All right. They're going to come off the end. Don't be fast, sword. Give them a chance. They're going to come off the end and square up. And then they're going to take a second step. And as they start that third step, wind the Joe up. Nice. And ski in the diaphragm. And sword, take a little step back so you don't get hit too hard. And now pull the Joe back. Push it back. It's in Hikiotoshi. Very nice. Raise up and strike to the eyes. Don't hit them. Don't hit them. We want to keep keep them. So now put it away. Oh, Sami. One. Two. Turn the lower hand. Three. Put it away. You say, Dan, how many kata and Joe are there? Oh, a lot. So now sword disengages. One step. Two steps. Joe goes back. Three steps. Nice, 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 nice. Better and better. We're going to do it about five times. You say, this is impossible. I can't do it five times. I'll collapse. You're doing great. No worries. If you need to switch, switch. Check. So, again. Tachi Toshi. Yoi, swordsman takes position. Hadzume, sword comes in. So one, two, match. Nice. Three, step across and draw the Joe back. Nice. Step and strike for the head. Okay, they're going to get tricky here. They're going to try and cut you. Pull the left arm all the way back and then put the Joe up under their hands. And now step through and pin the swordsman's hands. Right against their body. Hey, good. So now the sword slides off the end, squares up. Don't be too fast, give them a chance. So as the sword goes back, one step, two steps, wind the Joe up into Kaishiski. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Ha, 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 ha. Turn the hips, so. Right? And now with the next step, hits the diaphragm. Pull back, push back. Another big step from sword and strike to the eyes. Nice, nice, nice. Great, great. Good. So, Osami. Draw the Joe all the way back. Right palm to the thigh. Left is out. Turn the right hand around. Put it away. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Sword goes back. One step. Two. Now Joe goes back. Okay. Excellent. Jack. We're going to go over a couple of things. You can watch. Get it in your head. So... 
，他要去偷袭你，有诶，他怎么样 ？So one, two, three, four, and six, seven. 始め、はい、come in one match two good 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 draw back and step across three attack the head four nice they come around to cut draw back up and under the hands So if no one move, no one move. I know it's a really uncomfortable position, but you know. So, so I want to be here, guarding my head. Okay. Cool. So we would do it. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So reverse your feet. It's awkward. It's this. There you go. Nice. You're a little close. So, yeah. Don't don't get hurt. Just switching ends again. Yeah. So now it's backwards. There. Hey, next pin, step and pin. Great. Sword comes off. Squares up. S two steps. Three. Wind up, Kayaski. Ski. Whoop. Draw the Joe back. Push it back. To hikiya toshi ni kamai. Strike to the eyes. Great. Oh, Sunny. Each. Neat. Turn the hand. Sun. Sword goes back. Joe goes back. Nice. Sword looks good too, by the way. Hard. You think, well, it's a stick. How hard can it be? It's really hard because, <laughs> you know, you're the margin between us. Is this right? I've got an edge. I've got a little edge on him, but I can't make any mistakes or I lose that. And he's got razor sharp steel, and all I've got is a piece of wood. So I have to have everything right. I have to have the distance right. I have to have the feeling right. I have to have my targeting right. The other day, someone went to ski me, and they went like this really hard, and. Yeah, if they if they'd hit me here, they would have killed me. I'm not kidding. They would have hit me right over the heart because he came in close and he went ah, just like it was a spear, and I slid. Luckily, he was a little bit out to the outside, and so as he's coming through, I slid that shoulder back, and I took that hand off the ska so I could get keep from losing anything, and I came right around and cut him. 
So come around and cut me as I draw back. You don't need two hands. Just cut me. Okay. Yeah, I just cut him. So he had overreacted with his weapon. He thought, oh, I'm really going get, to get Dan this time. I'm going to ski him. Well, it didn't work. It didn't work. So you can't screw these things up. <laughs> you know, you got to keep your margin right. And you've got to use the weapon right. And being strong doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win. In fact, it may mean, most probably, you're going to lose. So um, Jack and I are going to talk a little bit more about this kata before I make you do it, I don't know, 20 more times, maybe? 30? Yeah, Ben votes for 30. <laughs> so here's some of what's going on with this kata. Why is it the first kata? Why is this what you learn when you walk into the dojo and it's 1640 or 1840 or today? Why is this the first kata? Well, in the old days, when you walk through the door, and you can stand. In, in Aikido, we always sit in Seizo when Sensei speaks. But in Koryu, you don't necessarily do that. And my teacher explained that to me because I came from Aikido and I started kneeling every time Come and notice Sensei was speaking, and he's like looking at me like I'm crazy. And finally, he explained, "Look, we're all equal. We're in the same class. We're in the old days. We would have been all samurai. So you're not always bowing like that, the way that I was used to in Aikido. And so that was really liberating for my knees. I really, really appreciate that because Kami notice Sensei likes to lecture. So, so that was good. <laughs> this is really good. So here's what what's going on. You've walked through the door. You already know how to use a sword." You've been taught it's the best weapon in the world. You beat the Mongols back, the Koreans, you know. It's a great weapon. It's a great weapon. And now you've come in to learn stick art. You, you're learning it because you get some rice from the Lord for learning this policing art. And they're going to put you to work. So it may not be the most romantic thing in the world, but you need a job and you need to feed your family. So you're going to learn this art. And the first kata they teach you undoes everything you know about the way the world should work. Because the world should work where the sword wins, where the sword is the aggressive dominant weapon. And this kata is about that coming undone. So as sword comes in, we match. He's trying to figure out the length of my weapon. I'm trying to figure out the length of my weapon. My first attack, I take the initiative. I'm not giving it to him. And right here, I have his eye. Bang. It's a big strike, but it's not so big I make him run away. I don't want him to run away. I want him right where he is. He is in exactly the position I want him in. And look at what's happened to my distance, if he could just get that blade where he wants to get it. He's got my arm. He's, got, he's within the cutting edge range of his weapon. This is a great position for him. Bang. And I'm offering him a trap, a target. If you're a swordsman, you know exactly where you're supposed to go. It's obvious, right? So I'm giving him this. He's thinking, oh, this guy, this guy's going to be easy. I'm going to take him out right now. He just steps around. I have nothing as soon as he steps out from under this stick. But he steps out, and I pull back. Well, now he's got nothing, right? Now I've got him. And I never let him back in the game. Pin. He goes back. I watch him. If I lift, it's a problem. But right here, I, I can lift. Well, I don't overreach. If I overreach, he can grab my weapon or he can cut me. Yeah. And the other thing that happens is if you overreach, when you go to pull back, your body does this and he can follow in and kill you. So if he's out of my range, I just let him go. If he's in my range, I push him to get the distance right. I reset, and I take the eyes. And notice, I'm not coming in before my weapon. Right? I'm not leading my weapon. I pushed, reset the weapons out in front so that he can't get to me. He can't get to me. This is the distance between us. He can't get there. So now, thank you. Now Osame, and again, I've got him. I can take the this, I can take this, I can take this. But I'm gonna keep a target as I go back. 
So he knows I have him the whole time, right? I have him the whole time. I'm drawn back, but I'm thinking I'm going in. Don't sneeze. And right here, I'm still ready. I'm still ready. I'm still ready. So when he gets out of range, I can start to relax. So your first lesson of this art is you take the initiative from the swordsman, you dominate the swordsman, you give them a little bait, they go for it, you slam the door on them, and you put them away. That's a really good first lesson. And much of the rest of the koryu is just an elaboration on how you set the trap, how they're going to respond, because a trained swordsman responds to targets in the same way again and again and again. They're trained to do it. You offer them this, they're going to take this. You offer them this, they're going to take this. You offer them this, they're going to take this. And so we're setting these things up in kata again and again and again. This one, I get a start. The next one, we'll just show it, we'll do it easy. Subuari, some of you know Subuari. Right? What is that Kamai about? Well, it's an arrow blocking Kamai. But he doesn't have a bow. He's cutting for there. Again, I'm offering him this juncture. Well, that's really his target. It's a great target. So he's going to cut for it. Bang. So now he's cut past me. Bang. Pin. <laughs> Pin. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. So now he's going to get to cut me again. I'm giving him two shots at me before I do anything. So now he cuts again. So it's kind of the opposite where I've let him take the initiative and I give him all these crazy shots and he still can't get me. So the beginning of the, the kata really kind of reinforcing you as a beginning Joe player who knows sword. But this is a pretty good art. I can take the initiative and I can close the door when I want or I can give the initiative up for really a long time. Basically three moves before I say, okay, I've had enough of this. This has been amusing. But I'm done. And those are the first two kata you normally learn. So you're learning that first classical kata that teaches you this can be the superior weapon if you train hard enough. But you've got to train hard enough. So let's do it a few more times and then we'll tell you all the places where you can die doing this kata. <laughs> Just so you can be aware of what's out there. In case you're ever in the dark with a real swordsman, you decide you're going to do Tachi Toshi, you won't step into any of the easy traps. I'm going to give you that protection today. But first, let's do the kata a few more times. So, line up if it's your turn and you're rotating, line up. I don't know. Make that you haven't made yet. <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, something to look forward to, no doubt about it. So, with Tachi Toshi. Right? So I come in, and we match. Let's assume you can get through this part without dying. We'll just give you that. So now when he comes to strike, if he comes in like this, he hasn't stepped off line at all. He's never going to get to me before I get to him. That's why you have to step off line. And there's a sweet spot. You can't step back, and you can't step too far out. You won't be able to get to me. You've got to find that place where when you step out, it doesn't give me your wrist, but it sets you up for the strike. But you definitely can't come straight in. You're dead if you come straight in. So now here we are, and he's done a nice strike, and I'm going to step to cut. If you draw down, you can be killed. A lot of people do this. I don't know why. Because... If you draw back, I can't get to you. I just can't get there. And you say, well, it won't matter because you draw down. So, bang, bang. 
It won't matter. I can still get there. And I've watched people race, actually, and it's true. If the sword does this, and then this, it doesn't matter which way you do it. It really doesn't. Do it either way. But <laughs> what happens is, hey, okay, <laughs> that's a different outcome. Because now I'm not doing the kata. Now I'm a swordsman. I'm going to kill you. And as he draws back, I see the vector of his attack. So I know exactly where I'm going to have to block. And I also know where the opening is. And I don't need to stand there and wait and then go, oh, one, then two. Because as he's coming in, I already know where I'm going to go. I'm sorry, Jess. Yeah, don't walk into the <laughs> end of the blade. I already know where I'm going to go. So he's got to draw it back to stop me. If he draws it down, I'm going to have it. That's why in our school we always draw it back. Always back. Um, it, the difference is between having a sword who is really active and intent on killing you and a sword who's doing a kata. And it's easy to lose sight of the fact that the kata are supposed to teach you about how to fight a swordsman who's really wanting to kill you. So there's another place you can make a mistake. Um, hey, so he comes in and now we're doing it perfectly and he catches me. So if he lifts me too much for this, and lots of people like to do this, you know, or lift straight up. It's not hard to come off the Joe if it lifts you too much. And so we tend to keep this Joe in this area, this height. And notice that there's always a threat to my eyes, my mouth, my nose. And when you're this close to the end of a Joe, you feel it. You know. You don't need a laser pointer on it to know that right now he's got my mouth. And right now he's got my left eye. And right now he's got Uto. But right now, he doesn't really have any of those things. And right now, if I'm desperate, and most swordsmen are pretty desperate. Right? So, you have to be careful with your karitsuke. Don't get sloppy with the karitsuke. There is a little lift. There's no question there's a little leveraging. But don't do this. In our school, we don't do that. Other schools might, but our school won't do that. Sensei is very adamant about actually knowing how to survive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really adamant. So, so we're here, and he's going to pin me right. So, zoom, bang. That's pretty good, by the way. And I'm going to square up. And so, if he winds here, he's dead. Don't wind up too early. As a general rule, no matter how you're skiing, don't try to come in too early. Um, there's kata where I'll come off this way and he just goes to ski me. So he can ski me by putting the Joe on me and I can put my blade on him at the same time because look at the distance, right? Well, that's fine. I will trade this ski for that ski every single time. Every time. This is a good deal for me. You know, I'll do this two, three times if you want. You know, if you're really enjoying it, we can just keep doing it all day. So, be very careful about when you take that Josaki off the center line of the sword. You've got to be smart about it so that they're out of range. So in, tai, in Tachiotoshi, bang. So let's turn this way so these folks can see. This is a good pin for us. This is, this is a good pin. It's good distance. And I square up. So this is actually the most dangerous place because I've loaded up the left leg and the left hip and that, this is the power hand with the sword for a ski and so if he moves here this is when he dies really quite efficiently. Bah! Right? So you definitely don't want to lose center here. The next step is different. This isn't the power leg. It's disconnected from this hand and now he can safely come in and ski. Nice. So this is another place you can die. Right? <laughs> like how many places can you die? Seven, I think. Uh, there's another place you can die. <laughs> right? So he winds up and he's going to ski me. If he over skis, right? And then as he goes back, boom, just fill the space. Just fill the space. He's got nothing. He's in a dead zone for a minute. 
and you can fill the space. But let's say he's skied right, bang. And so now he's going to strike to the eyes. You have to lead with the weapon. You can't lead with the body. Hey, I can't do anything. I can't do anything. So we're done. But we're not done. Because I'm going to back up, but I'm going to back up in a way that gives me the optimal advantage for this space. I'm going to move my left leg. I already talked about how that's the power leg. I used to be a sprinter a long, long, long time ago. And you know how you get down in the blocks when you're a sprinter? And you're like that, and you're ready to go. This is the same moment. This is the same moment. I draw this foot back, and I'm ready to launch forward into him. I'm ready to launch into him. If he shows a weakness here, and we're really fighting, I'm just going to go right here and ski him. I'm not going to do that. He, he hasn't shown an opening. He's got at least two things he can do quickly at this distance that will make him win. But right here, when we're doing kata together, and you'll see Jack and I when we're doing it. This is slow. It's like, I'm checking him. No opening. Okay. Now I take that second step. That's when you can move on the Joe side. Because we've broken that deadly contact. And now we can separate. And as we separate, we relax. So now the cot is over. Now you're out of it. But that's why you have to be so careful and precise in Joe, because there's all those moments where you make a little mistake and you can be dead. You can be dead. And that's also why it's kind of a deep art, because you have to keep thinking, like, what's the swordsman going to do? How do I counter what they can do in any given moment? And I'm not saying there's only one way to do each of these things. There's only one way according to my teacher. But I'm, I'm open to the possibility that there are lots of different ways to do it. But there's definitely more ways to do it wrong than there are ways to do it right. Right? So let's try it a few more times. And I know you're just learning the one, two, threes of this kata. You're still in your head. But try to be aware at a lizard brain level of that kind of deadly exchange that's contained in the story of this kata. That the other person with a sword really can harm you. You can't lose sight of that, even when you're just learning the basics of the kata. It makes it, it makes it jump. So try and bring that to your, your kata, okay? So let's do it again. Hey. You know, that's how you learn. You know, right there I could have put my blade on you. Right there you're dead. You, we, we just say you're dead. Dead. Or I laugh. Sometimes I just laugh. But you got to let them know. This is probably a little premature for most people on the Joe side. But on the sword side, the senior people, you're going to go back and practice. Let your partners know when they're alive and when they're dead. It's important feedback. So switch if you need to switch. We'll do it again. Hey, Tachitoshi, yoi. Hajime. You're okay. Draw back, step across, attack the head. They, they come to cut, up and under the hands. Nice, nice, nice. No one move, no one move, no one move. Turn your shoulders a little. And have, yeah, 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 yeah. That's better. Look good. Hey, step through and pin. Sword slides off. As they step back, Joe winds up to ski. No, no, no. Lift the front hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They change position. Ski. Draw back to Hikiyotoshi. Turn the front top hand up. And, str and strike to the eyes. We just got to finish it out. <laughs> hey, Osame. Each. Draw it all the way back. Knee. Right hand to the thigh, 
Turn the hand over. Son, put the Joe away. Sword goes back. Joe goes back. Nick, when, when should we quit here? It's like 5.10. We could probably go two more hours and we'd have it. Okay, two more hours. Like 15 more minutes? Yeah, okay. We'll quit by 5.30. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I... I uh, sorry. You could borrow anyone's Joe. So there's another thing I wanted to say. And it's actually something that Legend Sensei was addressing, which has to do with how to be on the sword side, to make things make sense. So we'll do, uh, yeah, we'll do Tachi Toshi. Hey. Hey. So you see a lot of this, where the sword just resists. You know, ah, oh, you can't move me. Ah, oh, come on, what do you got? You got nothing. You see a lot of this. A lot of this in American dojo, but in Japanese dojo too. No one ever talks about this. You know, it doesn't, it's like you figure it out or you don't figure it out. They just let you hang for a while. If I'm like this, just dead. Yeah, I am just dead. <laughs> you can't be a resistant swordsman. You can't be a resistant swordsman. You won't learn anything, they won't learn anything. Well, they'll learn all the kaiwas about how to break you. That's what they'll learn. Because that's all you're giving. Um, do chuden uh, no kuritsuke. So, pop in, reverse. So, no, 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 no. Just stop, just stop. Relax, relax, relax. No muscle. It's okay. So we're here, right? And normally what's called for is he's going to slide back to get his distance. And then he's going to turn and pin me. <laughs> I outweigh Jack. I'm taller than Jack. He's stronger and prettier. But my size helps. He can't just turn me, right? Well, he doesn't need to because what I'm doing is trying to cut him. And he's just following. You never do that in Kaka. Never ever be active. Uh, Tachiyatoshi reverse Kuritsuke. So, zut. Touch. Eh. So, what I want to do, don't move, is, I mean, look at that target. Look at that target. It's his whole body. How can I miss that target? Good God. This is the sweetest day of my life. I said there was a trap for the neck, but this is also a trap. Because what I want to do is, bang, bang. Don't, 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 you're ruining my moment. <laughs> bang, bang. You know, I don't give any of these. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> so, but you never see anyone do that. No one will ever do that with you in Japan. I mean, very rarely. You got to know someone. So instead, the sword is light and yielding. So he just does the technique. Hey. Oh, I didn't move. I didn't give him anything. He just did. So go back. So now, if I actually act and he sticks to me like glue, <laughs> it's the same technique. It works even better because I'm giving him energy to play with, right? I'm giving him his pin and his drop. Don't move yet. We're going to do it really slow. We're going to do it like uh, Tai Chi. I'm drawing back to Migi Hasso so I can cut him. Oh my, this is not working the way I want it. That's what's going on, right? But you'll never, it, it's not discussed. But keep in mind when you're doing this on your own that the sword has to be light. It's a proxy for being active because it's way too dangerous to actually be active until you've done this a long time. You have to be light. You let them do the technique. You let them experience the technique and what it feels like. And when you do it long enough, you begin to develop feeling through the weapon. It's just like Aikido, where, where if I push, you can feel it. You know where my energy is. That's really good. And uh, you were paying attention. So uh, it's the same with a Joe. You can feel the energy through the Joe. It's 
like if I go here, it's not dead to him. This is living cellular structure in his hand. He can feel right through it. <laughs> what I'm doing. He knows what I'm doing. So he can react to what I'm doing. Right? So keep that in mind. Bring that kind of yielding sword to practice. But when you're on the sword side, always know that you're yielding only as a proxy for where you really want to cut. Right? It's, there's a real sword embedded in these kata. It's not just, oh, I'm being a nice guy. Now, <laughs> I wanted to show one other thing about the Chuden no Karitsuke. So he's got to come to cut. Bang, bang, bang. So. If he stays here and he doesn't want to move, eh, you don't feel very stiff to me. Oh yeah, that's great, that's great stuff. So, you know, it's, it's just so easy. Just let him go by, just let him go by. Um, so don't be stiff, don't go back to your dojo and think, well, Sensei was just being nice to me when he was soft, which is what most of us think, right? That's, you come home and you think, yeah, but I mean, you know, really, if I was being rough, he was just being nice to me. No, he's not being nice to you. He's being honest. He's being honest. So keep that in mind when you're doing these cards. So now, one more. We match. See how big it is? Right down the center. Take center. Draw back and step across. Strike for the head. They're going to cut, block, catch the hands. Pin the swordsman's wrists. Sword slides off. When they get to a good safe distance, wind up and ski. Draw back to Hikiyotoshi. Strike to the eyes. Oh, something. Each. Knee. Turn the hand. Sun. Put the jaw away. Sword moves back. We move back. Okay. Introduce yourself. He's Grover. See? <laughs> See? What did I tell you? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Tachi Toshi. Yoi. Hajime. Match. Step out and attack. Step across, draw back, and attack the head. Do it on your own time. Very nice. Very nice. Ski, strike to the eyes, Osame. It's so easy. I wish I could do it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, mostly excellent. There are little moments maybe that could be improved on, but mostly excellent. So, the rest of you, right, from Ben down. Hey, Tachi Toshi. So, so. Yoi. Hajime. Sword comes in. Joe matches. Step out across and attack the head. Draw back, attack. Sword comes around to cut, up underneath to catch. Now step through and pin. Looking much better, much better, much better. Sword slides off. As they back away, when they get safe distance, wind up and ski. Encourage them to keep retreating. Now draw back to Hikiyotoshi Nikamai and strike to the eyes. Excellent. Excellent. Nice. 
Hold something. Each. Draw it all the way back. Knee. Right hand to thigh. Turn the hand. San. Put the jaw away. Nice. Sword retires. Joe retires. Cool. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah. Okay. Are your brains dead yet? <laughs> good. I'm going to show you the next kata that I would teach you, but not today. And maybe not tomorrow. I may have to recalibrate. Tachiyotoshi uh, no kage. <laughs> I like when people laugh behind me. <laughs> it's always a good sign. So there's three, four sets that you learn and then they start to take you seriously in Japan as a Joe player. Omote, the first set. And you just did the first kata, the first set. Which is a great start. The second set is Chudan. And that's good. It's really fast. It's like hammer and tongs. And then you get to Ranai, which is more of the same. And then you get to Kage. The fourth set, Kage. Kage is like the reverse image of the kata you learned in Omote. And it's done with a swordsman who's very, very sophisticated. This swordsman is patient and fearless. The Chudan swordsman is like a adrenaline-fueled teenager on a skateboard, just you know, swinging around. This is a mature swordsman in Kage. I'll do my best impression. Hi. Tachitoshi no Kage. Yoi. Hadzu. So, in Tachiyotoshi Omote, which you just learned, remember it's the, it's the Joe that takes the initiative. So, Tachiyotoshi no Omote, match. He takes the initiative. He attacks my left side. Okay. Tachiyotoshi no Kage. Sword takes the initiative. I attack his left side. Huh. Isn't that funny? It's the same kata, only reversed. Tachitoshi no motte. He attacks my left side. He offers me a target. It's a trap. He closes the door. Tachitoshi no kage. <laughs> Jack's brain's gonna explode. <laughs> So now I'm attacking his left side. I'm offering him a trap. It's almost the same trap that the Joe player offered me. Let's step in a little deeper. He's got my head. He draws back. He's got my head. He doesn't have my head. It looks like he's got my head. I'm wide open. My blade's out here in space. He's got my head. He doesn't have my head. It's a trap. The reverse of the trap in the Emote version. The swordsman's being the tricky one. I'm hoping he takes it. He doesn't take it though. In the kata, he doesn't take it. He takes the blade. <laughs> nice. And now, don't move. They describe this motion as drawing silk. Very slow. And for every centimeter he moves towards me, I move away. <laughs> 
so they're like, you take a photograph and hold it against a mirror. It's the reverse image. It's the same thing going on. We've just reversed roles in a sense. But the one commonality is, it doesn't change. He wins. He wins. He closes the door at some point and shuts it down. Um, we're not going to get to that kata because we got to finish right now and bow out. But uh, thanks a lot for trying. Let's uh, all bow together and, uh, and we'll work on some more things tomorrow. Right?